Hello friends, let's have a look at the uh, the link with the Bernoulli number with topic 3, trigonometry. So what we have done so far from the topic 1 is the introduction of the Bernoulli number with some Pascal's triangle and binomial coefficient. And topic 2, we came up with fancy function sine x over x and it came up with the product expression made into the summation with the logarithms. And then we came up with another great generating function such as uh, uh, x over 1 minus e to the power of negative x, whose derivative at 0 will give you the Bernoulli numbers. And what we want to do is to combine them together with the understanding of a trigonometry. So let's get to it. Okay. I love her. You know, she's, uh, she was the, one of the supporting role for the movie, and she, she played it really well. But anyways, let's get to it. So connection, right? Topic three, the reason why we are learning the trigonometry is to build a bridge between the real and imaginary and uh, between something with the discrete and continuous okay so what we want to do is really want to build a bridge using the trigonometry and let's see if that build can be also made between the Bernoulli number and later on the zeta function so let's get to it so what we are going to do is to actually play or play around with the generating function that we derive right we, with the Cauchy product right very fancy product and what we want to do is to sh claim to show that his nth derivative will give me the Bernoulli number. Okay, let's play around. So it's you supposed to be the coefficient will give me the Bernoulli number, and we know the list already using the you know the the the, the power sum and you know bit of expansion. We managed to find you know the first term being one negative half one over six is zero negative one over thirty and one over forty two etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so that is a great. So. Uh, if I use a differentiation to find the list of a coefficient, in fact, uh, we in fact get the following expression, right? So that is what we have, and we got this term. But here's the thing, if you compare with the terms that we already had, this coefficient of a linear is a little bit suspicious, because I know from the list, as you can see, what we see here is that B0, B1, P2, in this series, I got 1 half, 1 over 6, 0, negative 1 over 30. However, what we saw before was the b1 was who? Negative x, negative 1 over 2. So in fact, it should, this should have been, what is it? Negative x over 2. Okay, so that is interesting. So some alternative version of the Bernoulli number gives you b1 as positive half and some gives you negative half. But we want to work with the negative half for this practice for this question, but you can also elaborate this idea for your internal assessment of or for the extended essay, why positive half or negative half sometimes has to be uh, defined alternatively, right? So that's a great discussion. But at the moment, we want to have the B1 as negative half, so that's the premise. Okay, so what I can do is, okay, I had a positive x over 2 that, give, that gave us B1 as positive half, but if you subtract by x, this 1 over 2x, if you subtract by x, I will have negative x over 2, which then results, which then results that we do have the desired b1 to be negative half. So that's great. Everything else is the same. So what I then is, okay, I need to redefine my function, the generated function that we got it from the previous part, as the following. So I just subtract by the x. I just subtract by the x. Okay, so it's not big of a deal. It's not big of a deal. In fact, the previous definition wasn't so wrong because sometimes you define it for the positive half, sometimes you define it for the negative half. But for our purpose, I want to work with the negative half, so that's why I subtract by the x. It's not a big deal. Okay, so that is great. All right, so that's my new generating function of this Bernoulli uh, coefficient, Bernoulli number. And we just checked that his kth derivative at zero will give me the, what is it? The, the Bernoulli number. So that is great. Okay, that is great, with the b1 being negative half, so that's great. Okay, and in fact, you know, what we noticed something in, in particular is, that, look at this. Okay, other than linear, I only have the even degree, right? That means the, the odd degree will always have the zero coefficient, so that is great. So, uh, the case of Bionis, again, is in interesting. Sometimes we, we state for the half, sometimes we, we go for the negative half. You can actually see, you can actually investigate this further if you want, right? For your IA or E topic. And then also, you know, what I notice is that for the, for the up to 10th term, the, all the odd terms seems to be zero, other than the first, uh, for the first, for the degree one. But can we actually prove that the, it, it is going to be, remain zero for the case of the odd case, right? So that's another discussion for your IA. But 
that's not the aim of the lesson at the moment. I'm going to accept that it does become zero eventually. I mean, starting from n equal to one, and the uh, old term is to two n plus one. Okay, so you know, I'm just throwing out some further investigation for you as we go by, okay, against the, all the odds. So let's have a look. So can we read off the old term uh, uh, by adding what? So you know, what we had was a great generating function, but now it has a very lonely, very lonely a term which was negative x over 2, okay? But, you know, why don't we then set him free, you know, by getting rid of him and only, discuss, only discussing with even terms. To do so, remember that odd term was only the negative x over 2. To get rid of him, by, I would just add by his uh, opposite sign, which is a positive x over 2. So now, if I let this to be my new generating function, it's only going to involve with what? It is only going to involve with the even term. So now this new function only contains what? Even term because the old term will actually cancel out. Now I only have even terms. So that's my new function. That's my new function. Okay? So this is my new generating function. That involves only even term. Unfortunately, his derivative does not give you the Bernoulli number uh, anymore because it got rid of the old term. Okay, but, you know, let's talk about it. So what I want you to do is try to put into the common denominator. So if I do some algebra, I got the following, okay? And what I want you to do is, in fact, divide this by e to the power of negative x over 2, top and bottom, which is essentially multiplying by 1. So I'm not really changing anything, am I? So then I get this sort of a fancy-looking function. All right, that's very fancy. I got the exponential function. It looks like it's conjugate with the negative, okay, but I got the sum and difference. Do you remember where you might have seen before? And in fact, these functions are very, very popular again for who? Paper 3. It already happened since 2021. It already happened twice with the hyperbolic function discussion, discussion on the on such function, right? So it's very important for you to know it, actually. Even though it's not in syllabus, it's a very popular for exam questions such as a paper 3. So let's have a look at those functions, actually. So what we actually are going to talk about is one with the complex number. Okay, so for the older form, we know e to the power of i theta is defined as a cosine theta plus i sine theta. And in, in fact, we can use this definition to describe for the cosine and sine. Right? This, the sum of complex number and conjugate divided by 2 will give you only the real part, which is a cosine theta. And difference will give you the imaginary part, which is i sine theta. Okay, that is great. So that is another representation of a cosine and sine with this complex number. Okay, so that's what we learned in the service. But what you can actually develop further is the following form. So that is the discussion we had, isn't it? But in fact, in, in this time, you know what? I like to make a fancy substitution with the theta. I'm going to substitute with ix, where i is the imaginary number and x is a real number. Okay. Let's see what we get. We know i squared is negative 1. So if you actually, well, hold on a sec. Yes, you might say, is it possible? Is it okay for me to substitute with the ix? Shouldn't I define things then if I wanted to work with the imaginary number? You're absolutely right. Obviously, you can investigate further for who? Ia. But let's suppose it is true. It is okay. Then what I see here is if I put it in the sine theta, sine theta with the iz, oh, sorry, it's supposed to be ix, my bad, right? If I plug it in, then you see that it's going to be ix and ix, but then it makes the i square becoming negative 1. So then I got this following. Well, I don't like having the imaginary number in the bottom, so I just rationalized, then becoming just what? Negative i, where I put the negative here to change the order, and that, my friend, is the, what is it? Another expression for the sine i z, and that is the representation of the hyperbolic sign. It's not in the service, but very funny, happens so many times in the paper three. So in fact, you should learn it. You should learn it, okay? Okay, so that is a definition of a hyperbolic sign. Who is a hyperbolic sign? This e to the power of x minus e to the power of negative x over two, that's hyperbolic sign, okay? And you can do the same thing. From the cosine, if you actually put the ix, you actually get the hyperbolic cosine. Okay, so if I define for you, hyperbolic sine is defined to be the, uh, the difference of the exponent and its conjugate, and then the cosine is the sum, right? Very similar to the definition of a cosine and sine with the complex number. And you can do the vice versa. So that is great observation. 
That's a great observation. Even though it's not in the syllabus, yes, a very, very popular has been and will be for paper three. So I strongly suggest that you learn it, okay? So that is great. So let's have a look at our initial expression that what we had was this generative function that we, we derived, but then added by the x over two to get rid of u. Very good, the odd term. So now I'm only dealing with the even terms, all right? So that is great. And we had this fancy top and bottom by, you know, dividing by its above. I think it was negative x over two. And then what you notice is that, oh, okay, that's a hyperbolic cosine, and that's a hyperbolic sine, right? That is great. So, you know, over two over two just cancels out, no more problem, then it becomes hyperbolic cosine of hyperbolic sine. But just like the sine cosine, the cosine over sine is a cotangent, sine over cosine is a tangent. If I see the ratio between the hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine, we call it hyperbolic cotangent. Okay, that's very fancy, right? So what I can then see is that, oh, right, this generative function, function with the x over two can be defined simply by this hyperbolic cotangent function of x over two. So there's a great link between, again, with what? Bunch of function with the trigonometric function, well, hyperbolic function, right? So let's have a look. So what I can then define is that, okay, that is going to be simply that x over 2 times cotangent x over 2, right? And remember, that was what? In fact, the, uh, uh, the one with the derivative that gives you a binary number, we already know his power series. We already have discussed the power series for him, right? We already defined the power series of this, which was represented by the series with only the even Bernoulli coefficient. Okay, so which was this? So as you can see, I derived this using the substitution of the hyperbolic function, and in fact, we can we can use the Bernoulli, uh, sorry, the power series that we already have defined from the gx plus x over two from topic one and topic two. That means that it can I can actually find the hyperbolic, uh, sorry, the the power series for this. Uh, x over 2 times hyperbolic cotangent of x over 2. So that is a great. But obviously, we don't want to write like this. We want to obviously describe using the, what is it? Uh, 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 the, the sigma notation. And remember, this term, uh, what we are giving is the only the even term. Even terms of Bernoulli number, right? Such as b0, b0, b2, b4, b6, divided by who? 2 and factorial. So that is the definition of this uh, 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 function with the sigma definition, which only deals with, again, the even Bernoulli term with the even uh, degree polynomial divided by 2n factorial. So that is a great, okay? And what we can do, actually, we can simplify further, meaning, you know, I can just rearrange the x over 2 to the other sign, and maybe just divide by the x and multiply by 2, and then, for, instead of dealing with the fancy x over 2, I can make it as x by, you know, substituting the 2x on top of the x, right? So, you know, I, I always prefer working with the simpler version, so let's try to make some substitution and algebraic manipulation to simplify. So let's have a look. So, you know, what we want to do is to get rid of the x over 2, you know, by rearrangements first. So let's try to rearrange this to the other side. What I then, have, what I then end up getting is just multiplying by who? Uh, 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 2 over x, the reciprocal, but, you know, it's going to be term by term, so it actually gets multiplied on every term of the sigma, of the sequence within the sigma. So, you know, it just cancels out, so it becomes 2n minus 1, and I divide it by, so I multiply by 2, but it's a constant factor, so I can actually take them outside of a sigma. Okay, so far so good. And what I want to do is, instead of working with this fancy x over 2, if you replaced x with 2x, it would cancel out, isn't it? So what I like to do is, in fact, composite with the 2x on the x, right? So, so that, that's what I'm doing. I'm compositing the 2x on it, okay? So by using the laws of exponent, I can actually uh, expand them as a 2 to the power of 2n minus 1, x to the power of 2n minus 1, right? And here's the thing. That's still the a very fancy series for the hyperbolic cotangent. Now, what are the odds? What are the odds for us to work with the hyperbolic function? I'm more familiar with the trigonometric function, such as sine, cosine, tangent. Uh, secant, cosecant, cotangent, right? Oh, but here's the thing, you know, okay, so I've got the hyperbolic function, but I want to back into the trigonometric function, then what have we done? What have we done if I wanted to move from the sine hx, hyperbolic sine to sine x? You're absolutely right, we made some fancy substitution with the complex number, didn't we? If I substitute with the ix, we somehow managed to see some multiple of imaginary number with the sine. So that is great, so what my bet here is, what my guess here is, what my claim here is, if I make some substitution with the 
i x on the x, I should be able to actually convert convert into the trigonometric function. Just like we saw from the hyperbolic cosine to sine, cosine, hyperbolic sine to sine, I want to do the substitution with the i x and see if I can convert again from hyperbolic cotangent into cotangent. Let's have a look. So we're going to actually try. So if I make this substitution to convert, let's see, you know, this is a hyperbolic cotangent, so that's the hyperbolic cosine over sine with the i x. We already know the definition of hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine with the exponential form, but I'm now replacing with the i x. Oh, hold on a sec, that is actually what? From the complex number, you know, if you add complex number and conjugate divided by 2, you only get the real part, which was a cosine. And the, the difference will give you the i times the imaginary part, which is this. Well, hold on a sec. Si uh, cosine over sine is a cotangent function. And from our guess, yes, it was correct that I can actually convert from the hyperbolic function into the trigonometric function by substituting with the complex number, such as i x. That is great observation. That is a great observation. That means I can actually do the substitution for my power series to get the power series of a cotangent x. Let's have a look. So, so from this, now I see from my power function of the who, uh, the, the, the hyperbolic cotangent, I'm going to substitute with the i x here right now, okay? Then I know it's going to actually become the negative i times cotangent function. Okay, so far so good. Obviously, we want to do more simplification, so I just expand the, the, the exponent. And here, especially for i to the power of 2n minus 1, you realize that, you know, you can realize i to the power of 2n is just an alternating term. That's great. And then if it's minus 1, you are dividing by the i. By rationalizing, you know that it becomes negative i times negative 1 to the power of n, right? But then now I see, okay, so that is going to be replacing that. And you realize that negative i multiple is a left and right. You can actually get rid of it by the common factor, right? So then you end up having this following expression for who? Cotangent function. In fact, now we realize, ah, I can describe the cotangent function as this following power series with the Bernoulli number, even term, such as b b naught, b2, b4, b6. So that is a great observation. How have we got this? We got we we, we used the generating function from the topic two, which was uh, um, what was it? X over e to the power of x minus one, and, and and what was it? Minus x. But then you know we wanted to leave out the only we only work with the even term, so we added the another x over to to cancel it out, and then that generating function gave us a whole bunch of the uh, the even term of the Bernoulli number. And using some trigonometric identity as well as the complex identity, we managed to conclude here. And that's why I say topic three, the trigonometry is a connection. He gets to connect between the real and imaginary numbers, between the real and complex, okay? So that's why we get to study comp uh, trigonometry a lot, because it's a strong, strong bridge for every island that we want to go within the AA service. So that is a great observation. But we are not done. What we want to do is to use that observation finally for topic 5 with a bunch of differentiation, a bunch of integration. Okay? That's pretty much it for me today. See you in everything, everywhere, all at once in topic 5. Thank you!